We're here to talk about UFC 159. Uh, a lot of people think that this that this fight was, um, you know, set up for uh, media purposes. That, that you know, Chael, Uncle Chael's done it again. He's talked his way into a fight. Uh, he talked his way into a fight with Anderson Silva. Yeah, he beat him down for four and a half rounds. Got caught in a triangle. This is weakness. You know, especially the triangle. That's his weakness. He's lost most of his fights via a triangle. Uh, you know, as far as uh, as far as submissions concerned, he definitely needs to, uh, you know, but the long limbs of Johnny Bones Jones, he certainly has to be careful in the guard of Johnny Jones, but we've never seen John Jones in his guard. We've never seen John Jones guard because we've never seen John Jones taken down. Uh, you know, Rashad Evans shot on him, didn't even come close. Uh, Mauricio Shogun Hua was dominated. Quentin Jackson was dominated. Uh, everybody that, that went against the guy was dominated. You know, no one could take the guy down. I think in this fight, we're going to see something completely different. We're going to see John Jones for the first time being taken down. Uh, Chael's one of the those elite level wrestlers like Matt Hughes was at UFC 40 fucking five or, or 50, you know, you know, but you know, in like the, the the, you know, the, the glory day, as I call them, you know, my heroes, when Matt, Hugh, uh, Matt Hughes was dominating the welterweight division, Rich, uh, Ace Franklin was, was was the middleweight, you know, and uh, Chuck Liddell at 205, and and, uh, and so on. So BJ Penn, now lightweight and welterweight. So, I mean, you know, the, the, to me, um, you know, I, I think uh, Chael, when he wants that double, he's going to get it. You know, he got it on Bispin. He got it on Anderson Silva twice, two fights in a row. I don't know how many times he took Anderson Silva down, but a lot. Um, he's taken down uh, the best of the best. Johnny Hendricks is another uh, 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 prime example of what's to come as far as, you know, uh, wrestling in, uh, in in mixed martial arts. Uh, when he wants it, he takes it, and, and he gets it. And, and that's Chael Sonnen. There's Matthew, Chael Sonnen, and Johnny Hendricks. As far as I'm concerned, those are the three best wrestlers in mixed martial arts today. You can agree or disagree, but, I mean, there's not really too much to disagree with, you know. But, um, you know, I, I'm here to give, you know, the odds. Uh, John Jones... Uh, is a, is a six and a half to one favorite to win this fight. That meaning that you know, say they fought seven times, Chael Sonnen. Well, John Jones would be a favorite to win. Uh, you know, six of those seven fights. Um, Chael Sonnen, however, uh, is an eight to one uh, underdog, saying that you know, uh. Yeah, eight times they fought. Chael Sonnen may win once. So this is certainly a fight worth putting money down on. Now, here's why. You put $100, just $100 on Chael Sonnen, and he pulls out the victory. And everyone's, uh, you know, when he fought Silva the first time, people people counted him out. You cannot count out Chael Sonnen. Here's why. Um, he took Anderson Silva not only, you know, into deep water, into the, into the championship rounds, you know, he didn't just, you know, uh, you know, bum rush him, try, try to uh, overwhelm him immediately and, uh, w you know, with his own style. He didn't just take him down and, and try to beat on him. He stood with Anderson Silva. Um, he, he boxed. He kickboxed. He, he, he defended um, Anderson's shots. He defended Anderson's strikes. Not only that, he, he landed more significant strikes in any championship fight in UFC history ever. Fact. So, uh, Chael Sonnen uh, goes into the fight, a huge underdog, and ends up taking four and a half rounds away from the best fighter on the planet, and there's nothing that can take that away from Chael, and no one forgets that fight. Everybody remembers that fight and how close Chael was to becoming the, the UFC middleweight champion. He's moving up in, in weight, going to 205. Um, you know, it, it, in my opinion, uh, John Jones is number two pound for pound in the world. I put Anderson as number one. Um, you know, active, actively, actively fighting. Uh, I put Chael, um, you know, somewhere in that list. I'm not quite sure where. John Jones, certainly number two. Anderson, definitely number one. And, and uh, we're, we're looking at uh, the past versus the present. Or the future, and uh, you know what? What can John Jones do? Can he stuff every single one of Chael Sonnen's takedowns? I doubt it. I, I highly doubt it. Um, can he get back to his feet? I'm pretty sure he can. But I would not. Uh, I wouldn't take anything away from Sonnen. People are saying that Sonnen talked his way into this fight. He doesn't, uh, you know, deserve to, to have John Jones, you know, or, or another title fight. I disagree. I completely disagree. I mean, the, the guy was the only one to step up. 
you know, when no one else would. Um, they've done the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, it seems like their team's whooping Team Jones' asses. And, uh, you know, John Jones, like I said, is, is my top five favorite fighters. But so is Sonnen. You know, so is Chael Sonnen. And Chael Sonnen never fails to surprise me. He's an excellent fighter. Um, it's just, you know, unreal how the guy can pull a rabbit out of a fucking hat. You know, it's, he's old, you know, older, you know, speaking like in terms of Randy Couture and in terms of Matt Lindland, um, in terms of, you know, wrestlers, the, the, you know, grinders, John Fitch, George St. Pierre, um, you know, people like that that take you down and grind you and wear on you and make you carry their weight, push you against the cage and make sure that you don't get the fuck off until they win the decision. You know, I call them, I, I, I call them decision fighters, you know, point fighters, period. They don't go for the finish necessarily, but they get the job done. It's not their job. To finish, what their job is is to win. Their job is to win the fight. Your job as their opponent is to make sure they do not win the fight. So you know, be you know. So what if it's boring? Be it as it may, you need to figure out a technique that will make that boringness stop. You make that fight not boring. You know, make, you know, make it exciting. You know, counter what what they have to offer. It's my style versus his style, and that's it. I'm gonna take you back to um, to Anderson Silva versus Chael Sonnen. Uh, it was actually I'm gonna take you back to Nate Marquardt versus the, uh, uh, Chael Sonnen. Uh, Nate Marquardt was a huge favorite, four to one. Um, you know, everybody thought Nate Marquardt was gonna get a, 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 a rematch against the uh, the middleweight kingpin. Anderson Silva, and it didn't happen. Here's why: because Chael Sonnen dominated Nate Marquardt over four, over three rounds, uh, rather, and uh, it was one of the last um, outings we saw of uh, of the great uh, up until UFC 158, which I got knocked out by Jake Ellenberger. Anyway, um, you know he was put into a nasty guillotine early. He said he was miserable. It sucked. It was terrible, but he went through it, grinded him down, and won a three round decision. 3027. Um, he fought Anderson the, Sp the Spider Silva soon after, and uh, beat him on the feet. He knocked him down two, three times in the first round alone. Um, after that, he was smacking his ears, smacking his ears. It, it, it it's an incredibly painful technique, and and it, it's mainly used to take your uh, parent, uh, your opponent's uh, cerebellum. It, it's just. Um, you know, it's really, it's, it's effective, and it's old school, and you can see it in jail, and uh, I like that. I, I like the old school shine in jail, and, uh, you know, I read his book two, three times. This book is, it's contagious, it's hilarious, it's, uh, it, it's, it's all jail. It's all jail, and, and there's some really inspirational stuff to be read if you're reading deep enough. Um, you know, the guys pulled out, you know, the guys pulled the stops out that nobody else had before. I don't understand why people are, are underestimating him as far as they are. Here are the odds for UFC 159, um, Jones versus Sonnen. Um, John Jones is sitting pretty at negative 650. Chael Sonnen is at plus 760, meaning um, Chael Sonnen is approximately an 8-1 to one underdog. Um, John Jones... About a six and a half to one favorite. So I mean, considering the odds, you know, it, it it it's similar to Silva. It's very similar to Silva. But look at the Silva fight. Look what happened in the Silva fight. If he wouldn't have got caught in that triangle, if he would just relax, you know, if he would have realized that Silva, you know, from his guard had his uh, you know left hand wrapped around Chael's right wrist. And was shooting for that. I think they were so Chael was so tired, fatigued, used to what Silva was doing. I think he, he he fell into a certain groove and didn't want to you know lose that because he was winning the fight. He was winning the fight. So why change it up now? If it ain't fixed, don't fuck. If it ain't broken, don't fucking fix it. And uh, you know I think Chael, even if Anderson did shoot that left leg over, you know would be able to defend from there. Um, you know, uh, Anderson being a no-gatter black belt, knew what he was doing, knew the correct time to throw that left leg over. That left leg came up. Um, he, he, he cinched in the, the triangle, not only the triangle from the back, but also had an arm bar in there, too. And Chell had no, no option but to tap in the fifth round.
after being beaten down for four. Um, that's four rounds for tail, one for uh, for Anderson Silva, who continues to reign and uh, and uh, claim the middleweight division as his own. So um, you know, Chael moves up in weight. He's fighting the number two, in my opinion, pound for pound fighter in the world, active fighter in the world, and Johnny Jones. Johnny Jones brings to the cage some unorthodox. That that's an understatement. Not some unorthodox. Just all unorthodox techniques. Every time we see Johnny Jones, we see a new move. We see uh, a mixed martial arts technique never, never used before. We see another, you know, a, another uh, spinning something or another takedown to something that we haven't seen before. You know, it, it's just, it, it, it's quite an indictment. You know, having to sign a contract saying you're going to fight. John Jones, it's, it's tough. It has to be. It's got to be rough. Um, yeah. Um, in the co-main event, we have Michael Bisping and uh, Alan Belger. Alan Belger has the worst tattoo I've ever seen in my life, and that is of Elvis Presley. And believe it or not, that's Elvis Presley. I, I couldn't believe it. that it, When someone, I said, who the hell, you know, who the fuck is on his arm? And it was Elvis Presley. And it was like, eek, it was terrible. Um, I don't like Alan Belger's tattoo. I don't really necessarily believe that UFC 100. He uh, he, he he lost to um, to you know uh, he, um, what's his name Akihiro Akiyama Akiyama. I don't necessarily believe he lost to Akiyama. Um, I gave the fight to Belcher, and um, I don't see how it got fight of the night at all. But it did. Um, he, he played an important. He plays an important role. You know, it makes martial arts. Alan Belcher, he's daring. He, he's ballsy. He's not scared at all. He tries new techniques every time. He seems to be growing as a mixed martial artist. And that's what's most important. You know, that's what's most important. He's still growing. You know, he's not just, you know, a one-trick pony. He, he's trying to grow, become better. And uh, so is Bisping. Bisping is suffering, coming off of a devastating loss against Vitor Belfort. Uh, a head kick knockout by uh, Vitor Belfort, a very vicious head kick knockout. This is the second time in in, uh, in Michael Bisping's career where he's been knocked out silly, ridiculous, made, you know, basically, you know, look silly. It looks silly. He, he uh, you know, seemed to find his range in the first round. And uh, Vitor didn't. Vitor was coming out. Vitor was looking for blood. And uh, Bisping was looking for range. And they came out in the second round. And kapow. You know, th these two worlds collide. And uh, Vitor's world won. Um, very shocked. You know, it was kind of like a Brian Stan Vanderlei Silva thing. When Vanderlei beat down Brian Stan, uh, I was. I, I totally expected Stan to win that fight. Uh, you know, it just goes to show how unpredictable mixed martial arts can be. Bisping sits at negative 160 and Belcher at plus 150. So they're very, very close. There's no two to one. It, they're just very, very close. Bisping is the favorite, and I can see Bisping pulling off a decision. I don't see him pulling off the knockout submission. I do see him, however, pulling on a stellar performance, and my pick is Bisping in the main event. I'm not going to make a prediction. I, I did give the odds. The odds are, you know, basically, uh, you know, seven, seven to one uh, in favor of Jones. And I, and I don't, you know, I don't argue with it. I, I, you can't argue with it. Why argue with it? You know, John Jones has done nothing but incredible, impeccable, impossible, thought, impossible things in the octagon. So, you know, why beg to differ? Um, you know, any questions, comments, please hit the subscribe button. Hit me up. Let me know. This is UFC 159. This is going to happen after. Phew, there's plenty of fights to come. You know, this is, there's uh, there's UFC on, on Fuel TV 9. Uh, Gustav Sim versus Musasi. There's UFC on Fox 7. Um, Henderson versus Melendez, which I'm going to get into later. Uh, I'll give you the odds on that, too. And then UFC 159, you know. Obviously, um, you know, there, there's a lot of, uh, of events I'm skipping over. But I'm doing this for a reason. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I really want to get into this Jones signing thing because we've all seen them on Tough. And, uh, you know, Chael signing, he, he's been told before, it's been said before, he's not going to win. And he's found a way to, uh, you know, you know, just climb the ranks. And uh, I, don't, I don't expect anything different from Chael in, in the fight against John Jones. And uh, lately, there's been an exchange of... of um, War of words against he and, and Jones, and I don't take this to be anything except for hype.
for the fight. I don't buy it. I think uh, they like each other. I think they're good guys. I think they're into making money. I think they're, they they understand the game, especially Chael. I've been around for a long, long time. Understands what it takes to to sell pay per views. What it takes to sell you know tickets, and um, you know they, they, they do it well. You know uh, yeah, Jones coming from the Jackson camp. Does everything well. Very well rounded. A finisher, a striker, a submission artist, um, an up and comer, the youth advantage versus the experience advantage, you know. Joe Rogan recently went on record as saying I'd much rather have the uh the not the youth advantage, but the experience advantage. I'd much much rather, you know, have been in there several times and be able to adapt than have this youth advantage. I'd much rather be older than younger, which is interesting to me. Uh comment rate, uh, let me know what you think, subscribe, I was over 101, I'm out, until later, um, more videos to come.